Hello and welcome to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at the Holden Gemini. <laughs> Hello and welcome back and Quartz Light, if you're new, we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from around the world from the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond that as well. So if you're interested in subscribing, which is completely free, please do so. It really does help the channel and helps you find the videos that you want to watch. We've got hundreds in the back catalogue now. Anyway, back to today's episode. We're off to Australia. Now, a few of the Australian viewers, it's kind of, this is kind of like a car a few people mentioned. And, you know, I like to do brochures that people want to see. After all, this channel is really for you, the viewer. And we've got a lot of very knowledgeable viewers out there. So I try and do as much as I can, at least, of what you actually want to see. A few people mentioned the Holden Gemini. First thought of all, okay, yeah, I'll certainly look into that. Not a car I'm familiar with, and of course, Australian viewers will know that. You know, I'm new to Australian cars, but I certainly have a keen interest in them because I think they're quite fascinating. Anyway, once I looked at the Holden Gemini, I thought, oh, it actually looks very familiar, and I'm sure it will to you too. Anyway, let's have a look at this brochure, which is from August. 1979 and it's an all range brochure brochure that we did i think around about this time last week so if you've not seen that video maybe i'll i'll do a link at the end but let's turn to the holden gemini and try to ignore these rather lovely and fantastic color schemed vans and utes there the holden gemini let's just zoom in on one of the images and there is the gemini this particular image is obviously a station wagon or a state and now you look at it you think oh this is quite familiar to you well certainly the steel pressing certainly appears to be an opal cadet c stroke chevette let me just uh, throw up the opal cadet c so you can have a look at that if you're not familiar with it and here it is, the Opel Cadet C. You can certainly see those familiar lines. This is the a round headlight model, so that's certainly a difference. But they did later on change it to a square one, so I'll show you that as well. And there we can see that square headlight design. Although, again, slight differences indicate they're in a different position. But certainly, you understand what I'm saying. That's why it's kind of like a little bit familiar with me. Although... We didn't really see too many Opel Cadets in England where I spent most of my childhood. Um, the car that we saw was the Vauxhall Chevette, of course. I always quite like the Chevettes. Shown here in a state or station wagon guise. You can certainly see that rear end being the same sort of idea, the same pressings at least, as the Gemini. But of course, Vauxhall always like to do things a little bit different for England. Yes, Vauxhall with the Chevette had to have that sort of droops, newt, more aerodynamic front end. And actually, I must admit, I did like it. But again, you can see that rear part the same as the Gemini. Okay, the Gemini. And these would have been the Geminis from 78 to 79, only quite a small... Uh, period for this particular newer model first introduced actually in April 1978 and these were called the TD and the main difference really between the TD and the previous TC was the introduce this radial tuned suspension which he kind of like talks about throughout this brochure anyway it starts by saying Holden Gemini born to outperform the rest. It starts quite weirdly. If ever a car was engineered to outperform every Japanese car in its class, it has to be the Holden Gemini. How did that turn out? Um, and then of course then it's got that RTS radial tuned suspension, little uh, uh, 
logo there which like i say is on pretty much all this brochure there's the, re the responsive handling of radial tune suspension superb ride and comfort zippy 1600 overhead cam engine for ample power plus more features more styling more luxury and more models to choose from he goes on to tell us the luxury leaders of the gemini range are the Gemini SLE sedan and SLE coupe with velour interiors, stereo cassette player, uh, radio, sports steering wheels and special cast alloy wheels. Then there's the Gemini SL sedan, SL coupe and Gemini four door sedan. Or maybe a wagon is for you. Gemini station wagons has the luxury, reliability and performance you need. And for work or play, there's Gemini Panel Wagon, built tough to really take it. And again, we had a Chevette van, which again, I think the press deal was kind of like the same. So this is the image we started looking at, this two-door station wagon. I mentioned this quite a few on Quartzlight, but I never understood the idea of a station wagon stroke estate being two-door, because presumably it's a family vehicle and then... You're struggling to get in the back although i suppose with small kids at least they couldn't play with the doors maybe but very strange unusual wheel trims on this particular model but those in the uk will kind of realize you know very much chevette estate at the back there and indeed there is the gemini panel wagon pity we don't have any other image than this Although weirdly, in the UK, our Vauxhall Chevettes became Bedford vans when they became a commercial style vehicle. Bedford Chevan, imaginatively named, uh, would have been the same kind of thing as this particular model. And then this kind of like is your top of the range model for the Holden Gemini, the SLE it does look a little bit fancy look at those wheels very nice special cast alloy wheels as it describes it as inside velour interiors stereo cassette player um, sports steering wheel in there as well so that's your high spec model and notice it's very unusual color coordinated mirrors but kind of like chrome little bits on the bottom there so that's particularly a very unusual model so that's your holden gemini's obviously looking like your base holden model same for Vauxhall with their chevettes and this 1980 full range brochure kind of like shows you where it is positioned right at the bottom of the tree your base model in the uk in this australian brochure it's telling us the gemini is a 1600 the Chevette's only had tiny engines in them in the UK, just a 1256cc four-cylinder engine. So, as tends to be the theme, the Australian models always had larger engines in them. And then we turn to the back page, and there is confirmation of the range. So they had a sedan, an SE, SL sedan, SL Coupe, SLX sedan, SLE sedan, and SLE coupe and of course they also had that uh, station wagon and the panel van version although all using that same 1.6 litre engine uh, four cylinder four speed although it looks like the SLEs um, both sedan and coupe are actually using a four sp uh, sorry a five speed gearbox which is certainly something a little bit different certainly the chevettes were just using four speed no matter which one you got so that's interesting looks like they're all manual transmission and all using that rts suspension it also tells us that it's got a front disc rear drum setup um and m manual steering rather than power steering but that's what you would expect at this time for a small car so the chevettes and indeed the um opal cadets were very popular cars actually it's sort of like your budget you know if you're on a budget type of car, uh, vehicle 
I imagine it's similar in Australia. I don't know how popular they were, so maybe a few comments on if they were a particularly popular car. Certainly in the UK and Europe, these were very popular cars at the time, and they were everywhere, and actually they proved to be pretty robust little vehicles so great if you're on a budget now going back to the holden brochure this is the full range brochure so we may return back to some of these holdens for 79 at some point in the future but for now we'll say if you've not done it already please do consider subscribing it's free helps the channel helps it grow gives you better content and also helps you uh, find the content you really want to have a look at and also not miss an episode so really a win-win and what's more it's what we all want it's completely free but we'll end by saying there's a couple of boxes there if you do want to continue watching there are other videos there or just go to the main page and you'll be able to find hundreds and hundreds from our back catalogue but for now we'll say thank you so much for watching take care and goodbye